everyone, welcome to episode 30 of Heroic Nonsense. This time we'll be checking out my favorite Dinobot to ever grace the skies, Studio Series 86 Swoop, with a special guest appearance by my original 80s version with some of his brothers. But first, a few reproductions of some famous scenes from the G1 cartoon and 86 movie. Try to figure out which scene or episode they came from with more images at the end of this review. All right, let's do this. Right off the bat, my favorite thing that stood out for me on this guy is his size. In the original cartoon, Swoop was generally the same size as the other Dinobots in bot mode, yet his toy was the smallest of the lot. That never stopped me from absolutely loving that figure as a kid, but he was still fairly small compared to the rest of his team. Well, fret no more, as he is here in all his full-scale Dinobot glory, ready to wreak some havoc as the Dinobot's aerial bombardier. As you can see, I'm happy to report that Swoop has all his characteristic design elements based off of his G1 cartoon character, while also pulling some very specific cues from the G1 toy while changing up others. He has that very striking gold pterodactyl head prominent on his chest, a nice mostly grain silver finish, and his characteristic sword and wing bombs that make all of this come together extremely nicely. Being a Studio Series bot and leader class, he avoids most of the gap affliction smaller bots have, though he does have a bit on his bottom legs on the back, but it doesn't really hurt too much. Otherwise, he is really nicely proportioned and feels actually pretty light for a bot this size. His face really captures that original cartoon feel and is protected by his very cool helmet with that sweeping fin that could give Cyclonus a run for his money as one of the most unique head sculpts out there. Lots of ports for his bombs slash missiles that allow you to configure them whichever way you want, front, back, on his shoulders like a seeker, tilted on his wings, standard, hidden, or as weapons. And the gold plating for the bombs themselves adds that nice bit of color to complement his overall look. As for degree of movement and stability, the wings do throw off his balance a bit, but that doesn't stop you from displaying him like I did here in a bunch of different action shots. One bonus that I only realized once I took out my original Grimlock and searched for his G1 sword was that Swoop comes with the sword for Studio Series Grimlock, something that was missing from all iterations of Studio Series Grimlock to date. Nice little addition for those who are clamoring for this since SS86 Grimlock was originally released. The Dino Mode is also as you would expect, which is to say awesome. He is generally based off of a pterodactyl, but a metallic jet version, and hits all those cues including his large sweeping wings, though less rounded than the original G1 toy, his large imposing beak which opens and closes, and that large characteristic fin in red. As was true of the original and the cartoon version, he can be posed this way, which allows you to get a good idea of his scale and build. I personally wouldn't display him this way, but it is 100% accurate and does actually look pretty good. This is the way I prefer displaying him in Dino Mode and which one looks awesome and two gives you some room in your display if you leave him hovering above the other Dinobots since they are big. I'm using a NECA stand here which specifically works well around Swoop's waist. You can see the detailed circuits and markings throughout his silver wings and his large Autobot symbols on the tips which is a nice accurate addition. You can also use some of the different flames and laser accessories that have come with past Transformers figures as there is a port way back in his beak though he doesn't come with any himself. I prefer a longer one if you have any given how long his beak is, looks a lot better if it can come past the tip. So this transformation is fairly straightforward and a lot simpler than the other Dinobots. So first thing we're going to do is flip up his beak like so and open up the top portion. And then we're going to just pull the chest open like so, so you have some room to lift up the beak and then you can click back that portion in. Now over here you just gotta wiggle around a bit and push in the chest so it connects like so. And Then we'll flip it around and open up the wings so they each untab by unfolding them. Do the same over here. And then to extend the wings, I mean, you could leave it like this technically, but to extend the wings, you just open them up and tab them in. So you get this nice sweeping feel. I'm going to turn it back and close up the fists just by rotating them in. Do the same over here. And then you can see over here, there's some tabs on the wings that fit into tabs on the arms. So you just have to click those in. We'll do the same on the other side. Just wiggle it a bit. There you go. Push it all back together. Mine is a little bit loose in the middle, but it's overall fine. You can just 
pull out the wings a little bit like this. They're on a kind of joint, just to, uh, just to give the wings a little more of that kind of winged feel. We'll just close these parts of the back of the feet, lift them up, and then you can see the tab here fits in this one. So we'll fold them in, click it in, do the same for the other. And then you just have to push this little neck piece in so that you can rotate the head back and forth. The mouth opens and closes. And there you have it. Swoop ready to take to the air. All right, comparison time. So what's fun about Swoop and the rest of the Dinobots is that they are really part of a series that has spanned years to complete. So the fact that they all generally line up with each other is amazing. Size-wise, he is a bit smaller than the other Dinobots, though not by much, and I believe is kind of accurate lore-wise. Either way, this is where you generally want him to be, and is probably the reason we were able to use that extra bit of plastic for Grimlock's sword. In Dino Mode, he looks great and really looks fantastic against the rest of his teammates, especially Slag and Snarl. I'm glad they used the shiny gold similar to Slag for his head and not the flat mold injected version they used for Snarl, a missed opportunity for sure in that latter case. As the core class came out not too long ago, I figured I'd give a quick comparison of the two of these together. Not much you can do with these in the same display other than have a bit of fun. Though I do like the core class concept since it allows you to play and display them in different setups, especially when using some of the Titan class figures like the ship and city titans. Funny enough, the rounded wings for the core class swoop are actually closer to the shape of the G1 toy than the Studio Series 86 ones are. I always enjoy doing the G1 comparison parts of these episodes where I can because it is really interesting to see how things evolved and also add some cool background to these reviews. I have started a G1 specific series which you can link to here or below. There's obviously a huge difference between the original and studio series versions in more ways than one, specifically in size and posability. A big change you'll notice though is the color where G1 Swoop actually has a red chest versus 86 blue which is tune accurate. The designers did overall try to keep the main feel of the chest design, clearly updated though with a bit more dynamic markings. The heads are also very different, as was the case for many bots that had G1 toy face designs that were completely different than their cartoon accurate versions. Ironhide and Ratchet, I'm looking at you, but isn't too far off. You can also note the clear plastic beak on G1 Swoop versus the gold plated one on 86, though both sport the Autobot symbol. As for the side view, similar concept with Studio Series Swoop again being more tune accurate with a more upright flared fin design capping off his helmet. I think the wing is the part that most replicates the original G1 figure as you can see all the similar detail they both share down to the ports and even some of the mechanical details. The main difference being the original had this really nice chrome finish to it which makes me wonder whether that would have worked really well on the Studio Series figures or would not have fit at all. It did 100% work for the original though, and you can note the metal chest here as well on G1 Swoop. Same thing for the legs, which I feel are pretty similar in design, minus the stickering on the original, which begs the question, will Hasbro ever release a version of the Dinobots, and specifically Swoop, in more toy accurate colors with stickers like they did for the recent re-releases of Galvatron and Cyclonus? The weapons are pretty much on point here and replicate Swoop's original sword and launcher slash missile really well, down to including a circle on the launcher that represents where the screw went in on the original. And here's a quick comparison of the extra sword that Studio Series Swoop comes with, which is pretty much an exact copy of Grimlock's G1 sword, which Grimlock can finally wield. I know a lot of people were not happy with not having this iconic sword back in the day. Studio Series Swoop overall keeps the same mechanical pterodactyl look as the original Swoop, Though, like I've said already a few times, with more angular sharp wings versus the smoother, rounder versions of the original. You can really see the difference here between the chrome finish of G1 Swoop and the silver painted version of 86 Swoop. This updated version is again more accurate to the G1 cartoon look, and they both can be perched upright. Again, for a bit of fun, the three Swoops in our collection together, G1, Core, and Studio Series 86, all covering different sizes and clearly showing the differences in style and aesthetics. And this review couldn't be complete without showcasing my original collection versus our updated Studio Series one. It would be nice if they ever re-release exact toy replicas again someday in the future so we can finish up our G1 collection, though it's not looking too promising right now. The last G1 reproductions have not been that great in my opinion. These are totally fun to display this way though, and the G1 Dinobots were probably some of the best Transformers toys of the series at the time.
It would be really cool if they not only re-released a Series 2 of these versions in toy accurate design, meaning gold and silver chrome, clear plastic, similar paint, or sticker applications. Again, not holding my breath, but fun to think of, though perhaps it ultimately worked best for the originals in the end. So for the first display, we had to start with the boys together in all their furied glory. This is for sure the go-to display for the Dinobots and likely will be the way we'll display them because these guys need to be together. They look absolutely awesome and I know having the set completed has reinvigorated my boys' interest in the Dinobots now that they're a bit older and can transform them a bit better. Only issue in displaying them together is you need the room, which is why if you keep them in Dino mode, you can save some space by using a flight stand for swoop. Another way I've displayed them to date have been with the Quintesson Transformers as an homage to the 86 movie, including the Sharktacons and Alicon. Here I'm just showcasing Swoop against these bots, but our current display has been big enough to accommodate all the Dinos, Sharktacons, Alicons, and the Judge minus Swoop, so it still remains to be seen if I'll be able to get Swoop into the mix for space reasons. Another fun idea if you want to be creative is to display them together with Optimus, Ratchet, and Wheeljack as part of a creation of the Dinobots type display. You can even separate them out so that you have one more team-oriented version and another more tune-accurate version since Snarl and Swoop were created later in G1 lore. I'm using Teletran 1 here from the Arc Titan as part of the backdrop. If you have some extra sands lying around, why not have Swoop dive-bombing a Seeker in this type of dynamic action setup? There was actually a scene from the G1 cartoon where Swoop attacked both Thrust, seen here, and Starscream, so it could be a fun display idea as well, adding in a few Seekers into the mix. I'll end this section with the second half of the Guess That Scene game where I found some more scenes to replicate, which also can serve as good display ideas. The first few are from the different G1 scenes of the Dinobots creation or soon after, which, like I showed a few moments ago, is a great way to display them. This one is definitely an iconic scene, which I'm sure you can figure out. Let me know in the comments section if you have. And these last few are a bit of fun from the G1 cartoon series. You can almost hear Grimlock's voice over the scenes. These are a bit harder to find, so I'm impressed if you found them. Hint, these last two go together. Let's wrap this up with some review of the box art, which has evolved a bit since the Grimlock release, which I'd say had a bit more bells and whistles, but you do get a nice piece of swoop art on the front, shrieking through the sky. The back is standard, nothing out of the ordinary, and has all the typical elements you'd expect. The side has the same image from the front, repositioned a bit. Well, the other side is yet another version of the Dino mode with the 86 references. Sadly, no drawn bot mode on this package. If you have the whole set, they mostly line up at least on this side of the box with Grimlock's and Slag's boxes being only slightly larger. Swoop comes with the insert you can use as a display of a Cybertronian type landscape, which is always nice to have, but not essential. We don't use these in our displays, but it can be good for some close-up shots like my earlier one and this one here. So that brings us to the end of this week's Dinolicious episode. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Next week, we may head back into the world of G.I. Joe Classified, and I may again shake things up with an 80s toy review episode after that. Question is, will it be G.I. Joe or Transformers? Stay tuned. Thanks for sticking around, and remember, it's all such heroic nonsense in the end. Transform!